What is the Kessel Run anyway? We know that it's something that Han Solo's miraculously made in less than 12 parsecs, but why is that so impressive and why should we care? Well, before you see Solo, a Star Wars story, brush up on a bit of history from the galaxy far, far away on today's episode of The Dan Cave. The Kessel Run, which was first mentioned by Han Solo in 1977 Star Wars A New Hope, is a smuggling route used to transport spice from the mines of Kessel, where Wookiee slaves were worked to death to turn it into a recreational drug. Before Disney hit the reset button in 2012, Kessel was a planet home to a massive glitter stim spice manufacturing operation, producing what was basically a psychotropic drug made from the webs of space spiders that provided its user with feelings of intense euphoria, boosting mental and telepathic abilities. So think of it like MDMA for telepaths, not that I would know, I'm not telepathic. Anyway, Kessel and its mines were largely controlled by the Galactic Empire, hence the need for smugglers to devise a route to spirit it away from Kessel to black markets all across the galaxy far, far away. 18 parsecs in length, the Kessel Run was one of the most popular smuggling routes in the entire galaxy, leading from the planet of Kessel to what used to be the Cyclata Cluster, a group of planets that were controlled by the Hutt crime family. But now, well, now that's just a Star Wars legend, baby. The Pike Syndicate employed a number of smugglers, including presumably Han Solo, to transport its sweet space drugs across the galaxy so they could make their ill-gotten gains. But how did Han make this 18 parsec run in less than 12 parsecs? Parsecs are a unit of distance, not time after all. Did he even make the run in less than 12 parsecs, or was Han simply lying to sound cool? Well, there's a couple conflicting theories. According to an early draft of A New Hope, when Han makes his claim, Ben Kenobi, quote, reacts to Solo's stupid attempt to impress them with obvious misinformation, end quote. Kenobi is similarly skeptical in the 2015 novel A New Hope, The Princess, The Scoundrel, and The Farm Boy, wherein he also sees through Han's clever ruse. George Lucas, though, has gone on record multiple times over the years saying that ships are unable to travel in straight lines in hyperspace due to the potential for colliding with celestial objects. I mean, that would be the world's worst fender bender because you would just straight up die. Therefore, charting a course to get to your destination can be a tricky endeavor. However, due to the Falcon's superior navigation computer, it was able to make shorter, quicker jumps between points, enabling it to arrive at its destination even faster. Now, according to A.C. Crispin's trilogy of Han Solo novels, which sadly are no longer canonical, the Kessel Run is adjacent to the Maw Cluster, a group of black holes that distort space and time. By flying close to the Maw Cluster, Han, Chewie, and the gang could have conceivably made use of the distortion as a shortcut of sorts to make the run more quickly. However, this opens up a whole can of wormholes. Case in point, back in 2013, my friend and colleague Kyle Hill wrote an article for Wired that explains how the time dilation caused by traveling at light speed would mean that spending just one hour aboard the Millennium Falcon at light speed would result in Han returning to find everyone three years older. So one hour in his time is three years in the real world. Now, if we expand that to include the entirety of the Kessel Run, Han would return some 40 years later while merely having experienced about a half day himself, which is not exactly ideal turnaround time for smuggling. Here's your drugs, I'm sorry it's four decades later. Oh, I'll just give them to your now adult son. So there you have it, a brief explanation of what the Kessel Run is and why it's so important in Star Wars canon. And speaking of canon, we know we're gonna see a version of the Kessel Run in Solo, a Star Wars story, and it might be a little bit different than what I discussed here today, but that's the beautiful thing about canon. It's always evolving and changing, and Disney's looking to pull in elements from the expanded universe to make the best possible product, at least that's the hope. But tell me, what other elements of Han Solo's story from the expanded universe do you wanna see explored on the big screen? Let me know in the comments below and give me a spicy thumbs up while you're there. Careful, it's habit forming. Be sure to like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell, fam, or else you might miss next week's episode about the story of a married ogre who has a midlife crisis and gets transported to a faraway land by Rumpelstiltskin, where he must do battle with Will Smith and his son, Jaden Smith, who are astronauts for some reason now in Shrek Forever After Earth. Special thanks to producer Aaron Vale, age 11, for sending that one in. Keep it up, Aaron. Until next time, keep on digging. Let's open up the old mailbag, shall we? At Roller John asks, did you ever get into any of Marvel's 1970s horror comics? If so, which ones and why? Great question, John. Well, I didn't really get into the Marvel horror comics when I was younger because I was what scientists call a massive coward, but I came to love Tomb of Dracula because of the genuinely preposterous anime they made about it in 1980. Entitled Dracula Sovereign of the Damned, it is a batshit crazy adaptation featuring seminal scenes like 
Dracula going to his local restaurant king and chowing down on a juicy burger. You know, that thing that vampires eat? Sweet burger meat? Anyway, the comic is much better and eventually gave us the gift that is Blade. But tell me, which Marvel horror comics are your favorite? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.